Okay, so this is my second version of the greenhouse. I built this one specifically for these kinds of seeds, which need uh, cold stratification. Now, I should have planted these probably around Christmas or whatever, because uh, then it'd be more than enough as far as eight weeks and four weeks cold stratification. I know um, people put it in the refrigerators, you know, put it in a, maybe a paper towel and in a bag and then put it in the freezer and cold stratify them that way. Or I think it's actually the refrigerator. Um, they also put it in sand too, but I just prefer not to do it that way. Uh, I would rather have them actually in the flats. And then if you use sand, then you don't know how many seeds are going to be in each cell. Those kind of things. So I would rather plant them like I would any other seed, you know, in my flats. You know, sprinkle a couple of seeds in each cell. And then you know about, you know, how many seeds are in each cell and so forth. A little bit more control if you do it that way, I think. The only thing you're not controlling is the temperature. Now, I planted these about a month ago. So they're not getting the cold like they should. And this is why I built this greenhouse this way. So, how you see, the top is to basically shut all the water off. Because if I was to plant these in, either in the fall or during winter time, uh, the heavy rain coming down will just splash out the seeds and the soil that I have in there. And then it's gonna be mixing between different trays and half your seeds are going to be splashing outside of the tray so basically I needed something so I built this greenhouse so light comes in water sheds off or rain sheds off and and with the sides being open it allows the cold to come in and really allows the, the trays to get real cold because that's what you want because if I would have this all enclosed or heated it's not going to get that cold stratification that it needs for in order for them seeds to sprout now basically what I did was how I built this I've been using uh, more and more uh, lag screws more often and you know those guys instead of the bolts where you have to put a nut on the other side lag screws the only thing I have to do is just pre-drill and then um, I can just lag screw it in now the reason why I like lag screws or I, I've been using lag screws is because uh, well here's a good example if I use screws then I have the possibility of splitting the wood now if you don't want to split the wood you got to pre-drill but pre-drilling the size of a screw which is pretty small they don't have really far lengths because i'm using rough cut lumber and when i go to strip these you know i had two by fours that i ripped in half so this is a full two inches this is a full two inches so a full four inches with you know when i need a i don't know seven thirty seconds drill bit or something or like an eighth it's only going to get probably maybe like two inches deep which then you know which you could probably would make it work where you can pre-drill this one and then you got the start of the next one you take this piece out of the way pre-drill that one and then you can put the whole screw through both of them but if you use lag screws which are maybe like five sixteenths or quarter inch diameter or you can well three eighths is a little much but uh you can just simply get those paddle bits you know where the paddle bit you know is six inches long and then you can have no problem drilling through both of these while holding them and then just run the lag lag screw right through now if you are using lag screws or i guess some people call them lag bolts now you should probably have a washer around these because then you can probably really see them then. If you don't have washers, what's going to happen is these are going to sink in and it's going to be really hard to get a grip around the outside of them. So the other thing 
Another thing too is I use basically like lawnmower wheels and they have about a half inch diameter which you can get carriage bolts at your local hardware store hardware store they're a half inch diameter and the carriage bolts have a wide head and they have like a square insert right underneath it and usually those carriage bolts are threaded from the very tip all the way to the base so then show you here from the carriage bolt and this nut right here I can tighten this part where it's anchored and then using washers using washers and a lock nut on the end I can really control how tight um, how tight it is on this wheel and I wouldn't have to worry about you know using a, a regular bolt where I would have to tighten it um, where it would also keep the wheel from moving as well but this I can keep pretty freely all the while keeping it a good anchor and then uh, someone gave me the good idea of basically using this as an anchor point so it's wrapped around here at a diagonal if I wrap it here it could slide so you want to kind of wrap it around the top and around one of these poles here and then uh, obviously your blocks for weight and then an eye hook here in the end and all you got to do just loosen this a little bit pull that off so look at that you can move the whole thing to get to your plants to water now things that need proving upon now these strips work really well keeping the plastic down because this thing flipped at least two times by wind because because I, I don't have walls this thing is like a giant sail so what I need to do to improve this is I need a piece of wood that's all the way on the end here and then flip the plastic down, down over and this the idea behind this is to keep from this ripping here's another good example because you can tell the wind pulling us up over and it's gonna it's gonna eventually rip but I got that one piece coming down in the end and this wrapped over top staple it should work really well all right so to give you guys some dimensions most of the rough cut lumber that I buy is eight feet long this is about 18 inches high on this side about 30 or 29 and a half inches on that side I forget what the pitch of the roof is but I'm not gonna really figure that out right now to give you an idea here the roof is four feet long things I could probably improve upon now I made this wide enough that I could put three of these trays side by side each other um, it's a little close and you gotta really watch when you roll the greenhouse on and off because you might roll over one of your trays so I wish it was a little bit wider so if I were to keep the same dimensions on each side and I could probably extend this out a little bit by when I could have put this end piece on so technically I would have four foot piece plus another two inches so it'd be four feet two inches and then of course like I said I need to roll the plastic all over the top of that to keep the plastic from ripping and by doing that also um, if I would put a piece here in the end now I want to show this joint to you guys now most people would put this here directly underneath here and then that on top but the reason why I did that 
get a better view here is so when this bolt comes down through here if I would have this piece right underneath that then I would have another bolt coming in this way and I was worried about splitting so what you do you just simply offset things so by offsetting it I have a one going through here and then I have another one you know that's going through there and that'll keep you from you know splitting the wood so uh, I simply offset things but if if I move in this all the way to the end of this end piece going long ways then what I would do just you know so you're not putting you know 15 nails in just one spot where you could split it um, this long piece going a long ways I would drill through that end piece down through to meet this piece if that makes any sense so this piece going all the way across here that I want to hold the plastic over I would use that end piece to, to drill down through into here because this is going to be moved all the, all the way out to the end and then of course you know I have this pole here moved out and then all my lag screws and stuff they're not going to be you know crossing all at the same place and you know still maintaining that you know offset where I don't have 15 screws or lag screws or lag bolts going all to the same place now an important thing if you're new to building make sure you have your diagonals I have diagonals on this wall here and this wall on this side I have a diagonal there so your 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 diagonals keeps it from shifting one way or the other and also I have diagonals for these cross beams too so now I'll keep it shifting this way too and you just gotta make sure you have your diagonals in there it just makes it much more sturdier and square and keeps things rigid I mean this thing has been flipped over three times or two times at least by the wind just and it's all together still I mean there was a couple wax screws that that came undone but that was because I drove the holes too big but nothing with the actual engineering of building this thing and you can also easily change this around to where you have plastic on all sides and use it as your regular greenhouse so that can be easily done and um, the other thing too uh, the reason why I began not putting uh, not putting a piece here in the end so on the roof so to speak on the end is because I didn't want a piece here and then this gets you know from wear and tear be lower than the beam that's going across so then what happens is water tends to lay in here and the only way you can get rid of it is just lifting the whole thing but I figured by not leaving a beam all the way across the roof here it allows the water to shut off more easily and not be puddled up here but if it's on the roof it's not nothing to worry about because not going to hold anything on this side and it can just run right down but yeah that is my second version of the greenhouse quick and easy 